So welcome from me too. Uh, today I want to start from the back of a, a, a slide deck. So first of all, I want to thank you some some people. First of all, I thank you to my wife and my children. They were very, very patient the last weeks with me. Um, the organizers of FrostCon, I like that event. I'm a first timer here, so thanks. The ASCII doctor developers, that's one of the tools I use here. The guys from DocTool Chain and all sponsors and attendees who make that possible here. So, first a sentence from me. My name is Christoph Stöttner. For my daily work, I do most of the stuff with the three-letter uh, company there. So, I'm a business partner. And I do installations and configurations of application servers. Um, I started with uh, open source last uh, in the last uh, 100 years, so it's in 1900. 1990, one of the first um, Linux distributions I can I could get my hands on, and I'm a VI lover or Vim lover. I have no idea how Emacs is working, so maybe I'm too stupid, but I normally do everything with Vim. So when I can do it in VI, normally. Every editor should um, work. A little bit of history. What did I do or do I do um, for documentation? Um, the content is mostly configuration options, some screenshots of settings, and parts of property files. Um, and the last, let's say, 15 years, I used Products from Microsoft, LibreOffice, Wiki Engines, Evernote, Tech, DocBook. Everything worked, but I never was happy. I hate documenting from the bottom of my heart. But um, the problem with, let's say, Word, you normally start right after you are ready with your installation. When I install a product, I need about a week. So I copy all configuration uh, files away. I write them down some notes in, on paper or somewhere on my notebook. And in the end of the week, I start creating the documentation for customer or for colleagues. So I normally forget something. When I copy the configuration, it's not updated. It's outdated. Um, I need to copy and paste it into my documents. It's just boring. So I never had a really up-to-date documentation. What do I need in the documentation? Oh, no, I forgot something here. Just a disclaimer, I'm an administrator, so I have no dev background. So when you see code here, it should work. Sometimes I don't understand why it works, but um, it, it will work. So. My needs. I want to have a searchable documentation. I want to edit on all my devices. So the best thing in uh, documenting is when you do it during the install. So I normally do an SSH to a server. And so when I can start documenting within this session, that's perfect. Um, I need several output formats for customers, printings, product managers, and so on. I want to have offline support because I, I had such things the year, uh, years ago that we documented in wikis and then the server failed and um, the documentation how to restore it was in that wiki. So that's not the best way to store it. So offline support, maybe multiple versions. I want to have version control even I'm not a developer, but I want to use version control like Git or something like that. And I want to include configuration settings from XML properties um, and so on, so from my files. And I don't want to do a manual task to update that. I just want to have it automated. So why did I, I, I think I should start, why did I stop using the other tools? Uh, Evernote was nice, it was cloud synchronized, but it never supported Markdown. Uh, they started with a new license where they limited the devices, so that was the main reason I stopped using Evernote and the missing Linux client. Office was a compatibility thing and a licensing. Uh, editing on different devices was horrible, and 
I had several times things when I just switched the printer, the images flipped around, switched to other pages and so on. Uh, it's not fun. And I had to copy and paste all stuff like my screenshots and my configuration files into the text document. So when they change, you need to uh, remember to exchange them in the document too. Wikis work quite good, but editing on a mobile is sometimes not the best thing or not the most successful thing I do. Um, I already said sometimes wiki servers are failing, so when you document in the wiki of the failing server, it's not the best way. Uh, the syntax is different of, uh, from the different versions, and um, one of my things I want to have was I want to print the documentation or I want to give them to colleagues and customers. So I should have something printer friendly. And like the office thing, manual copy and paste stuff, images and configuration files. Then I started using Markdown and RST, quite nice. Uh, it was human readable text. I could edit it in every editor. Um, there are some YZWIC editors where I can have a preview. Um, I could type on my mobile or my tablet, it was quite good, but it was a little bit too simple. Uh, the including of property files was uh, too complicated for me. So I found out there is a project ASCIIDoc and ASCIIDoctor. They are working on a version 2 at the moment. I think uh, the last stable is a 1.6 or 1.59. Um, here you need to just recognize ASCII doc is the langu language definition. ASCII doctor is a Ruby project to convert the sources or ASCII um, characters to an output. It's text only. As I said, it's human readable, so you can recognize it's uh, a heading, it's a bullet point or something like that, but I can just have it in an editor. Quite simple syntax. It's not like programming Java or something like that, or like tech. It's not that complicated. It's just some characters. Um, automat automation a little bit later, and the differences to Markdown are written down in the document. I will upload the slide, so just read it there, please. So let's start with a little bit of a syntax. So when we, is there a mouse pointer? Yeah. So. I have two options for headings, numbered and um, not numbered. So a heading are just equal signs. Two, two equals is the first um, chapter heading. And when I want to have them numbered, there are the screenshots, numbered uh, headings and unnumbered. Um, so that's, that's quite easy. I can use blocks and image headings. So above each file or source code or image, I can just use a dot, where is it, there, dot heading uh, or a dot image and I get a, a figure, um, figure with number of the image or a heading above my source code uh, part and that's everything, that's all. A little bit of, uh, I often use lists. So bullet points or numbered lists is just starting them with a star um, for uh, unnumbered lists or uh, a dot with numbered lists. So I can just use two or three of them and I get them um, lined in. And last of the list ones is a de definition list. So just say a word, the explanation, and in, in HTML it renders that way we see here in the screenshot. Um, very important, including links and images. So links are just the links text and two uh, brackets. When I just use the link with brackets, it's uh, the text linked to um, the page I, I link here. I can link to files too, but normally I use the HTTP here. And when I write any text into the brackets, that's the link text. So like here, two times the same link, one time with text in the brackets, one time without, and the rendering under that. Images, the same image, two colons, the image name, 
and brackets is just including the image. With role, I can just um, add a CSS role and later write CSS code to format it. I can give it a ID in HTML, so like here, sunset. And when I use a single colon, it's an inline, inline uh, image. So it will move with the text. So that's the two differences here with, with images. Inline icons. I can use icons everywhere in my text. It's just use the font awesome icons. It's just icon, uh, the colon, and the name of the icon. So I can use it for Twitter, Linux, Windows, and so on. Very handy in the documentation. And I think one of the, the big advantages of ASCII-Doc is an admonition block. There are different um, layers of them, so I have warnings, cautions, important. They are extended with an, an icon. I can use CSS for that. Or when I use it in HTML and PDF, you see here at the left side an HTML rendering, at the right side a PDF. So I always have the icon and some text. So I can just add... Let's say for the customer, don't forget to back up that server. So warning symbol, don't forget backup. So one view at a A4 sheet, and they see that's important. Um, that's experimental in the moment. I can even include uh, buttons and um, and keys, uh, men menus and, and uh, keys to use uh, or buttons to use within the document. So like an OK button, the any key, or a control. So everybody knows how, how to click or how, uh, what, what to use here. Sometimes needed when I can script it. Um, I can include any source code. So like here, it's a Python code. It's just copied. In this case, it's copied to the document. Uh, there is syntax highlighting support in ASCII Doctor. The, uh, the syntax highlighting is working within HTML and PDF, so it's uh, not dependent to the output format. I can just get um, syntax highlighting. And there are three different, or I think maybe more, highlighting uh, engines, what we can use here. Highlight.js for HTML or root route for PDF and HTML, though that's handy too. Yeah. Question. Is it only limited to the entrance to the output or is it also dependent normally it should be independent of the uh, output format. But um, the highlight.js normally only works in HTML, so it's not working with PDF. Um, so I normally use the, the Rouch one that, that should highlight in all output sources, uh, output formats. Uh, as I said, so th there I copied the source code. That's not what I want to do. I want to include it. So I normally do uh, copy the configuration files from the server, put it somewhere in the near of my documentation, and then just include it in the documentation. So include two colons, like the image one, two colons, and the path and the file name to include. When they use just the file name with brackets, it includes the entire document. That's all, with syntax highlighting, when it understands the format. When I use lines equals, it includes the lines from, let's say, 10 to 15. There can be multiple blocks. I can say 10 to 15, comma, 20 to 22, and so on. So I can just have parts of the, uh, of the source code file. And I can use tags. So I can just say, OK, look in that document. When there is a part with a tag, just give me the document part between the tag symbols. I show it in, on the next slide. So that's, I think, uh, the best one, because when the file changes and you get new lines, the tag one is um, the most useful one, because you don't need to know the, the line numbers. So. That's a tagging. It's just a comment with tag two colons, the tag name, and brackets. And in the end, the end with the same tag name. They can be, um, there can be multiple ones in one to uh, document. They can be a tag within another tag. And when I include that, so let's say here, it's include the file name and the tags. And it just, here is the example. 
um, the first source code po uh, block is the nearly complete source code of an HTML document. In the middle, you see the include statement with the tag. And in the end, you see what appears in my uh, document after rendering. So just the four lines between the tag thing. In the last years, I normally, when I changed something in a property or XML file, I said, OK, I changed something here with date and my name or my company name. So when I searched in the file, I normally know where, where, where I edited something. Now I add the text on top on that. So I start tag, my comment, and in the end, the end tag. So I know where, where to place and what changed or what I have changed. A uh, really important one, I think we saw it already in the, in the last uh, slides, I can use callouts in the source code. I just add a, a comment sign, uh, brackets one, and add the same symbol here after the four dashes. That's the one, and I just write some text under it, and I just can explain that line will do this and that. So. And you see it in the, in the bottom of that slide. On the left, that's the HTML rendering. At the right, the PDF. So it's, it's the same. I can see it in all of my output files. And I can explain what happens in that line and so on. Or like that here, I can have multiples here. I can use variables within my ASCII doctor files. So I define just a variable with two colons uh, before and after and the variable text. Here with the callout, generic definition, I say something about the operating system is Linux here, and maybe I put something in like slash. I have a property file for Windows and Linux, so I put my slash one time to slash, one time to backslash, and I just use the variable in my normal code. So that's all. Or like the, yeah, you see it here, the Windows and the Linux version, just to, to compare it a little bit. I would advise you use variables in separate files. I normally write a generic file like the main document here. There is a lot of text like declarations of why do we something, um, there are schedulers, please be aware of, don't forget backup. And then I put um, all variables like host names, path names into my variable files. So when I switch a documentation from one customer to another, I just need to exchange the variables because it's the same version of the, uh, of the server I installed. Or when I uh, update the server version, I just need to change something in the main document and it gets the old stuff from variables and that's all. Um, conditions. Very handy too. So I can say, okay, I have a variable operating system equals Linux. And then I say, okay, when the variable operating system equals Linux, please print an icon and rocks. Or when the other one comes, really. It's like that. Including diagrams. I, already mentioned, it's human readable, so I can just open it in VI or any editor and change something. I can even open the text file with my mobile in yeah, any editor or even with a, a Git client, which I use on my Android, and commit my change and get a new, new updated um, documentation. So I can use these diagrams here, this DITAA or plant UML. And when you look at these examples, it's just a little bit of text and the rendering, or here, uh, like a small network diagram with um, server addresses, server names, used ports, and so on. Just some lines of code, so we can reuse it. Or here, uh, what's that, 10 lines, and we get a rendered diagram, and that's all, and we can just include it directly in the source code of the document, or we can include it like before with the source code. We can use tables, important for, let's say, host names, IPs, and functions. So I normally use that at the, one of the first chapters in my documents. Just write down uh, a pipe, and uh, 
we define here, it's uh, three columns. So all three lines are a line or a row in the table. And that's all. The percent uh, header there just says, okay, the first line is bold. So no think about the, the rendering. Um, and now let's put everything together. I will show you a simple document. And in the end, we will automate it with GitLab and CI, CD to get some output. We will use ASCII Dr. Gretel for that. We use JIT or JITLAB. And um, here are the links for um, the first one is the example document. So you can look directly at the example after the session and for the presentation. Even this presentation is just ASCII doc. So let's start with a document header. That's quite important. So the first one is the, is the title equals example project documentation. There's an author, an email, a revision number, revision date, and a remark. We will see it later in HTML in the bottom line. In PDF, I think it's at the first or second page. We have a language, English. We will see it a little bit later. I enabled experimental for the buttons. I have a title logo to include it on the first page of my PDF output. I want to have a, a talk. I define a default image directory so that I, when I include an image, I just write the image name and not the, the whole path. Uh, the doc type icons font is like uh, that we want to use font awesome. We want to use the source code highlight a rouge. And we want to have numbered headings. And the last three lines are my variable files. So just include the variables for Linux, the project, and some attributes. And that's pretty much all for the, the main document header. That's the attributes file I included in the, uh, in the header. It's just that when I switch the language, that I get the right description for, let's say, appendix, caution, uh, table of contents, and so on. So it translates for me. So when I use a talk, in, when I set language to English, I get a table of content. When I use German, I get an Inhaltsverzeichnis, and if I use something Arabic, I get an Arabic one. So that's all. Just switching the, the language is enough. The first paragraph uh, after the header is the preface. It's just... Yeah, some text. Uh, I think I borrowed it from the Bob Ross Ipsum page, quite funny. Um, and I wanna, wanna show here is best practice for ASCII doctor is use one line per sentence. It's just, it will put it together a little bit later. So when you wanna end a paragraph, you need an empty line. So, that's all. Then I use a condition. I'm going to say, okay, when there is a version number smaller than, let's say, 8557 in my variables file, it shall warn my reader that he needs an update. That we have an example for the condition here. Uh, we want to have different operating systems, so slash and backslash, I already mentioned that. Sometimes I have script files on Linux, we use a shell extension, batch on Windows. There are different paths. The path is defined in my variable file, so I just can have a main document and it updates just through uh, switching the variable file here. So, including configuration files. So, in the moment, I try to get my customers using Git for everything. So, and the, the best would be to get every configuration into the version control system. So, we create a, a project or a repository for, let's say, the, all XMLs in my application server, and they commit it and upload them to a server where I can hopefully access it. And my documentation itself is in Git 2. So, you could copy it just into your Git, but then um, it's complicated to update the stuff and to get the changes back. You can use submodules in Git. Um, I hope I explain it right. As I said, I'm an admin. Uh, you can add submodule, so the version control is in that Git repository, but you include it into your directory. 
So you have directly access to it, you can directly update it, you can upload, but it's not dependent on the repository you use, you use for your application or your documentation. And you, have, you can have multiple submodules. Um, oh, yeah, here for example, it's, um, as I said, the document, the presentation slides are written in ASCII doc. They are converted to HTML with uh, reveal JavaScript. And to get that, the easiest is to add the reveal.js project as a submodule to my presentation slides. So I have always the actual version of reveal, and I can just update my presentation uh, syntax. So now we talked about output, and I'm a little bit too fast. Um, how we build the output and which output can we create. I think the, the main outputs I use is HTML and PDF because I can print it, I can move it on a web server, or I copy it to a web server and I can just have access to it. But we are not limited to that. Um, Docbook is a, is a cool tool. It's sometimes complicated to write, but when I have the format, I can convert it to nearly everything. So Docbook is cool. Um, EPUB, so now it's back, uh, and there is a project which additionally uploads the, the output to a conference wiki and keep it updated. I want to write that for another wiki too, but I had no time in the moment, so but um, maybe we can do it. So we can even write ASCII doc, upload it to any wiki engine, or in that case, to a conference wiki engine, and when there's a change in our code, it updates the document on, in the wiki. I think one of the biggest projects with the most output um, options is Doc Toolchain in the moment. I, I think it's mainly for developers. Uh, I use some of their scripts, um, so have a look at that. It's, it's quite interesting. So and now, after half an hour, a part of the heading of the talk, the editors. Um, the best thing with uh, SK Doctor is I can use any editor, just writing text. I can use my mobile, I can use VI. When I like Emacs, I use Emacs. The, the Windows guys maybe use Notepad++ or Visual Studio Code. I found that uh, sentence in the documentation of ASCII Doctor on Windows, stay away from Notepad and WordPad. Um, I think that's like talking from IE as a browser. So, I, I, the EE? Yeah, I know, Windows 10 has support for line endings. That's quite good now. But um, it's 2018 now, or? <laughs> Yeah, so as a, it's, it's like talking fr from a browser and Internet Explorer, so yeah, I w never would use a WordPad for, for just ASCII text. text so. But it's, it's, it's your decision, just use what you want. As I told you, on a mobile I use several uh, version control clients. There are some for GitLab, for Git, for Bitbucket and so on. Um, but I also have Termux on my, on my mobile. I use directly Vim and Git in, in this. I think I twittered five, six weeks ago when I started to write the session slides. I'm sitting in the public uh, swimming pool or at the public swimming pool because I had a flu and I had to take care of my children. And I took the time and wrote the first 10 slides in VI on my mobile. So that's possible. Um, I think when you want to start with ASCII Doctor, you will ask for some preview because it's sometimes hard to, to write something and don't know what will be the, the rendering when you are ready with the document. So with Visual, Visual Studio Code, there is a, a already built-in preview plugin. I think you need to additionally install it. There are browser extensions for most of the common browsers which render ASCII doc directly. Um, 
you can use a makefile. I normally use makefiles for my um, documents. It's blue because it's directly linked to the actual makefile of my presentation. So just um, use it and have a look at that makefile. Or what I found out this week, because I needed to change some short things in that presentation, you can just use guard and guard file. Guard is configured that it just uh, checks files in a directory if they are changed, and when they are changed, uh, they do something. So I just use guard here and say, when my main document changes, please run a make. And so I just need to save the document, and I got an updated version on my local notebook. First thing of automation. Um, so when I want to convert the document on my local machine, I need to install ASCII Doctor. No, not very complicated. It's a it's a Ruby project, so you can install it with Ruby Ruby Gems or a package manager on Linux and Mac. It's it's just easy on Windows. I never tried it, but there is an installation description for Windows. And then converts the stuff on the command line. So just ASCII doctor and your source file, and you will get an HTML. Or when you say ASCII doctor uh, dash PDF and the source file, you get the PDF document. That, that's all for the first. Uh, that's all for now. Uh, problem is sometimes the dependencies. Just installing dependencies for for Ruby and that stuff. I I had problems with that months ago, and the moment it's working. I hope it stays in that level. But um, what's more easy is just use Docker. So you can download a Docker ASCII Docker image and and use that. So uh, the main advantage here is uh, the dependencies are already included. Everything is installed, and you can use it directly in the directory where your source code is staying. When we look at the Docker command. We use a docker run here with dash dash rm means nothing else that when the container ends running, it just gets deleted. So we are free from that container. Minus v is a volume, so we use dollar pvt, so the actual folder I'm staying when I start the program is mapped internally in the container to slash documents. And slash documents is that was ASCII doctor is later used, uh, will later use for the conversion. The call out three is just the container name, the, the Docker image name. And four and five is a command which will run in the Docker container. So we will run here uh, ASCII doctor main dot a doc. So it will generate a document main.html, and I'm done. No dependencies, just having Docker on my machine, Windows, Linux, and so on. It supports different outputs. I can use HTML, I can use HTML with diagram, I can convert to a PDF, and so on. The main things, I can use Docbook here as an output format. But the the most powerful thing for uh, ASCII doctor conversion is using Gradle. I have no clue what that really is. Um, I know it's based on Groovy. Uh, I can read some of the lines in that documents, but um, I hope they just work. Um, there is already an example directory, ASCII doctor Gradle examples, where you can see how to convert, let's say, ASCII doctor to PDF with Gradle. Uh, or creating presentations with Gradle. The main advantage of Gradle is I do not, I mustn't think about dependencies. Gradle will download all packages and use them for, for conversion. And so I can reuse them for my DevOps stuff. So I just can run a Docker container on any cloud provider, get the stuff and convert my documents. And we will see it a little bit later. So. I think I wrote in my uh, call for, uh, my session abstract that I show Jenkins. I, I had no time last week to install Jenkins, so I use GitLab because there is everything included. I will use the CI/CD pipeline from GitLab. It's free. Um, you can use it 
I think there is an installation object option to install it in your environment or you just use the gitlab.com web page. Gradle is supported in all bigger environments for a pipeline. So you can Gradle, you can use Gradle with Jenkins, with Travis, or with the GitLab stuff. So it's everything's the same. We will see an example with GitLab in that talk. Um, what will happen? It will convert after each commit. So when I commit in my master, uh, in my master branch, it will run that pipeline. Um, and I will get the result back as a download. The results can trigger something else. So when we get, let's say, HTML as an output, we can just upload it to a web server or something like that. It's just um, you can automate everything there. So we will just go until the download. We will see the document, and then we need more when we want to see more. I started a repository on GitLab. I added the CI CD pipeline. And I created the GitLab CI YAML file. That's human readable text too. You see it here, it's some lines more, but the most important ones, um, the Docker image we use for building the documentation, it's the callout one. Um, at two, it's a Ubuntu image, I think, or, or Debian, we need to install Graphits because we want to convert our plant UML um, diagrams. So we need to have Graphits. I install that just into that Docker container. We name the stage build. We start the script Gradle, so just Gradle without any option. And as artifacts, we want to get everything in the folder build docs as an artifact. We will see that later. And that build only runs in the master branch, that master five here. So that's, first of all, just copy and paste. You can re uh, reuse it here. And that's the, the Gradle file. So quite easy. I think the most important here are the version numbers. When there is a new version for ASCII Doctor Convert, we can just um, in increase the numbers. Um, and the last line is the default task, what Gradle will start. It's like make. Um, when we just start the command Gradle, it will do a generate HTML, generate PDF, and a generate docbook. So we get three formats when we just use Gradle here. That's the pipeline. I, I hope we can see it live in a second. Um, Callout one, there the pipeline runs without error, so we can be sure there is an output. The, se the number two is a failed one, so there was some error, maybe a syntax error or something like that. And the three is the download button where we can get our outputs. Let's try if we get, get it live. Uh, wrong desktop. So that one is, that's a document. So let's add one sentence, do a git commit, hello, and a git push. So that pushes our change to GitLab. And when we have a look at the pipeline, it should already, yeah, it arrived and has the state running. And when we just click at the build state, we see what happens. So in the moment that pipeline is pulling the Docker image, uh, in I hope in some seconds it will start the update and in the end it will start, just start the conversion. Um, trust me, that works. So I maybe we, see, we will see it a little bit later, but I want to show you the output. So that's the output from today in the morning. And there is the build 
Docs artifact. <laughs> no, not the book. So we want to see HTML we already saw. So let's have a look at the PDF version. I included the session logo here. And when we scroll down, it's just the documentation title, the author name, the version, and the actual date, the table of contents, my network plan, which is updated, my condition testing. So we need an update. And I think that's pretty much all here. We see the admonition and highlighted source code from an external file. In that case, I think it's CSS. That's, that's pretty much all. Let's have a look at the actual conversion. It's still running. Let's, let's come back later. But it already runs the conversion. So what we see here is, and you can use Gradle in your, um, on your local machine too. So just install Gradle, create a build.gradle file, and run Gradle on the machine so you can test everything and then upload it to any of the um, uh, Jenkins or Travis provider or so on, and so on. I think that's too slow here. You see, I convert two documents in three formats in that case, the example and the main document. Uh, the repository on GitLab is public readable, so have a look at it, clone it, um, copy it, play with it, what you like. So, I thought I want to show something. No, that's just the, the variables file. So, when we have a look at that uh, operating system, we should see it. Ah, it's done. So, that's the actual one, and now we have a look at the HTML version. So, and the main one. Uh, I think you can see it, yeah. So, the table of contents on the left side. Um, and the hello frostcon at my first chapter. So. It, it's updated, it was live, uh, it's working. There's an appendix, I hope that the, ah, there's the syntax highlighting broken, I need to rework that. Normally you should get uh, syntax highlighting in HTML and PDF and so on. When you have docbook conversion, you can do nearly everything. There is a tool Pandoc um, for download. Pandoc con can convert docbook, let's say, to VCO, Microsoft Word, um, EPUB, and I think 50 other formats. You can uh, copy it to Markdown, to um, yeah, everything what you think about. So there is no loss in that conversion. Um, when I do my ASCII doctor thing, I know most of my colleagues will expect a Word document or something printable. So I can just say, okay, Pandoc converted. I can add a template to my PDF or my Word document so it's even see, uh, um, with the corporate identity template of my company and everything is done. Everybody is happy and I, I'm not forced to work with the office because that's the most horrible thing for me. As I said, a good documentation is, I think, written during an install and not five or ten days after it, because you will forget some things. And, uh, and I forgot a lot, trust me. Because I, I often sit at customer's desk and then I think, oh, I need to write that down, or I need to write it down in the evening that I don't forget it too late. Five minutes later, it's forgotten. So write it down when you think about it. So as I said, the presentation is ASCII Doctor 2. It's just text. The logo here and the, the text in the bottom line are four lines of code in the whole do document. So when I go to the next conference, I just need to exchange the logo on one place. 
and I got the new design or I need to ex exchange, let's say, 10 lines of CSS and it's mostly branded for that company or that event where I'm arriving. And the, the text in the, at the bottom is the same. I think there was a big announcement one or two weeks ago that Fedora started uh, moving their documentation to ASCII-Doc. So Fedora has their has moved their complete documentation to ASCII doc format. They're using Antora. Antora is like ASCII doctor. I think it's the same developer, but uh, Antora is, goes a little bit further. They can create a uh, documentation from multiple Git repositories. So it can just say, okay, took one of this and that and move, put everything together and you have one complete document. So when you want to have that, have a look at Antora. Some useful links. The quick res reference that you just can just start writing documents. The doc tool chain, the cheat sheet, it's two or three pages long. Um, the documentation, I think the last one, it's a, a really cool blog. He writes about everything dependent to ASCII doc. He found everything. He, he knows the experiment experimental stuff. That's quite cool. Just just read it. And so I'm done with the talk and open for questions. Yeah. Thank you for the talk. Any questions? Wirfst du oder? Okay. Uh, you put uh, markers over an image. Is this an ASCII doc feature or did you just put these in the, into the image by hand? Sorry, I put? Uh, markers, uh, numbers, one, two, yeah. three, uh, to explain later in the text, uh, over one. an image. No, over an image, not a, not a source code. Ah, okay, yeah. The, the figure one. I think one. with uh, CI integration or somewhere. You talk about that one. So the figure one thing here at the uh, image? No, not that one. Huh? Uh, I think a few slides before where you show a screenshot from the CI tool. The CI tool, that was nearly the end. Um, that was this one. Yeah. That? You put with the uh, numbers? One, two, three ahead of this. Is this yeah. done with ASCII doc or just the, done the green the numbers are ASCII doc and the red ones are from Shutter from my screenshot tool. Yeah. That's faked, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a feature of Shutter. So it's a, a Linux screenshot tool and you can just select the numbering and click five times and you get numbered buttons in Shutter. Yes, um, I, w I just want to ask um, if you have used Sphinx documentation for, um, well, making a, a documentation production? Sphinx? Um, the, okay. the question was if I used Sphinx documentation to yeah. create documentation? No, I ne never tried it. Okay. Well, actually, we used it for our projects and um, well, what I missed here in uh, well ASCII doc was that you create a menu on the side just for uh, several um, yes for browsing through the documentation. Yeah, you can do that with Antora. Okay, that, that's that's working. So it's it's more admin or developer documentation. Okay. Okay, we'll have a look at it. Thanks. Um, um, when you render your ASCII doctor file to an HTML file, uh, will it uh, be a single 
uh, HTML file or can you render it into a whole bunch of HTML files which are interlinked? Uh, the default is a single HTML file, where, but from Docbook you can do everything. So from Docbook you can do a multi-page with a menu. So that's no problem. More questions? I normally have problems when I try to, to print something to, in order to keep the paragraphs together so that don't split another page and table together. Can you control that? No, you can't control like in, in LaTeX or something like that. But you can convert your um, output to, to Tech and there you can do everything you want. But no, it's, it's not done for, let's say, your master um, degree work or something like that. It's just to put stuff together and I would say my documentation is mainly something up to 25 pages. So um, they have no need if there is a picture on the first page or on the second, it doesn't matter. I'm happy when my picture is there where I, where I want to have it and not like in some products I mentioned already where the picture is just flipping around when I switch the printer. First of all, thanks for the talk. Um, I have two questions concerning output formats. Yeah. Um, first one, have you uh, played with the uh, Confluence output? No. And no. Okay, I have, question was, um, have, you, have I played with the Confluence output? No, uh, not in the moment. I have a Confluence wiki in my office. I will do that the next weeks. But um, my main product is from another company and I, I would invest the time to get that running in the moment. Okay. And the other question is, can you um, generate somewhat sane uh, markdown, for example, for readme files? So uh, we have, uh, for example, a long documentation written in ASCII doc and just uh, dump the abstract to markdown. Just the abstract. For so example. the question is just if, uh, if we can convert ASCII doc to markdown, yes. There is, uh, you can do that with Pandoc, so you can just Pandoc input format, uh, SK doc output format markdown and the opposite way. I migrated my blog some, some weeks ago from WordPress to, uh, Hugo and Hugo can work with backend markdown or with, um, SK doc. So the exporter for WordPress creates markdown. So I, I took the markdown output moved that or converted that to ASCII doc and now everything I, I have from my blog is in ASCII doc and uh, Hugo. So, thanks. More questions? I don't see anything anymore, but I think there was a lot of questions, so uh, yeah. there was a, quite some interest in your talk. Thank, Thank you again. You. So, see you in the evening. Yeah. Have fun.